Hey guys, in this video we'll see the updates which happened in the Flutter Forward event. The event was streamed from Nairobi, Flutter 3.7 and Dart 2.19 were announced. Things which are new in Flutter 3.7 First, Enhanced Material 3 support Adaptive layout Menu bars and cascading menus Impeller preview iOS release validation And DevTools improvements Material 3 support comes with the migration of the widgets like patch, bottom app bar, etc. For using these features, we just need to turn on the Use Material 3 flag. These new widgets are also available on their demo site. On the left hand side, we can see there is a toggle from Material 3 to material 2. The difference is clearly visible in the widget from material 3. There are actions like elevated, failed, floating buttons, badges widget, navigation drawer. In the adaptive layout section, Wonders by Gskinner was shown. This displays the 7 wonders of the world. In the presentation, the speaker runs the Wondrous app on a Galaxy Note and then tries to display the different adaptive layout. As the speaker tries to adjust the screen or the layout, the app also adapts. The speaker uses a foldable device and once the device is opened, we see the app becomes full screen and also that scrolling now goes to the right hand side of the screen. We can now create menu bars and cast cascading context menu. For macOS, we can create a menu bar using the platform menu bar as shown in the screenshot here. The team announced that the impeller, which is a new rendering engine for Flutter, is now ready for preview on iOS stable channel. For using impeller, we need to enable the enable impeller flag. Impeller is present inside the Flutter engine directory and basically it is aimed for predictable performance, instrument table, makes effective use of concurrency. When we release an iOS app, a checklist of setting to update ensures our our app is ready is now available inside the flutter build ipa command there is now a dedicated section in the flutter dev documentation which says the steps which need to be done before we publish an ios app there are updates to the dev tools also so now there are new three feature tabs like profile trace and diff the performance page now has new features for instance frame analysis which gives insight for selected flutter frame so for instance here it says ui jank is detected and also provides some suggestions for instance enabling track widget builds and also like for instance using the raster metrics. There is also a detailed documentation for the dev tools inside the tools dev tools section. We can now create custom context menus anywhere in a Flutter app. For example, when a user selects some text, we can add a send email button to the default text selection. This can also be extended for any image widget that can show a save button when right click or long pressed. There are some scrolling improvements that have arrived with this release. There are new widgets that can animate items added to or removed to from a list. There is now a magnifying glass that appears during text selection on Android as well as iOS. This release also introduces improvements to memory management that have the collective effect of chat which was caused by garbage collection pauses. The Flutter team now manually deallocates native resources that back certain UI dart objects. So in this release, the Flutter Flutter engine adds API for explicitly deallocating the native resources. One of the interesting features was font asset hot reload. Previously adding fonts to the PubSpec YAML, we required rebuilding the app to see that font. Now that also can be hot reloaded. Flutter team also announced the support for custom pixel shaders and as per Tim Snead, their work isn't limited to mobile devices and now they have early support for custom shaders on the web also. This is the website which shows the custom shaders for web. On the top, we can use the slider to pixelate the dash and we can go as low as zero. There are other options available on this menu like animated pontilism in which the dash is shown like this. So it appears and disappears with different dash icons. The other one includes for instance pixelate and we can see the dash icon is pixelated the team is also starting work on supporting 3D with Flutter and during the keynote they showed us models imported created with Blender. The speaker here imports a Blender model in the Flutter app and then shows us how it was rendered. The speaker used the dash Blender model, gave it a walking functionality and then exported the same. Inside the Flutter app, the user types in the animations property and then selects walk. And now we can see the dash starts walking. The speaker then fiddles with the app and then instead of of one node assigns many nodes to the dash. There are multiple dashes now and as per the speaker there were a total of 343 dashes. Switching to the Flutter website, the team announced a new feature called as element embedding which allows Flutter content to be added to any standard web div. 
This is a website built with this feature. On the right hand side, we can see there is a Flutter app and on the left hand side, the buttons are simply plain HTML buttons. We open the inspector tool and we can see here the section article is the right hand side and inside this, there is this div called as Flutter target. And on the left hand side, we can see the standard HTML elements like H1, then there are buttons, div. We apply some effect, for instance, shadow, a mirror, a resize. The coolest one is the device. We now push the button and if you can see here, the button in the app increases as well as on the left hand side, the value also increases. So this demo basically opens a new world of opportunities where using the CSS, they applied animated effects and the Flutter content also remained interactive. The demo also showed the HTML button and event handlers from JavaScript, which were making changes to the Flutter. The team also has now updated the JS package and they recommend you to use this package to call JavaScript APIs from that code. The Flutter team collaborating with Chrome team and other WebAssembly partners for allowing early support for garbage collected languages like that. In the Flutter forward event, the team unveiled an early support for Flutter compilation to WebAssembly. The speaker launches the Flutter web app, then opens up the web inspector and shows how the web assembly for is used for this Flutter web app. As we can see here, the speaker opens the WASM file and then shows the code which was in the WASM. This Flutter compilation to web assembly can help in speed and size optimizations. Overall, the Flutter web optimizations included canvas kit reductions, font size reductions, deferred loading and improved concurrency. And as shown in the slide here, the time to load for version 3.7 Flutter forward launch versus the master channel and the master channel plus custom canvas kit. Shifting the gears on Dart, Dart 2.19 was introduced with some precautions surrounding type inference. So for instance, flow analysis flags. Dart team also introduced the support for unnamed libraries. This was followed by Dart 3 Alpha. Starting from Dart 3 onwards, the type system is only support sound null safety. One of the coolest features of this announcement was records, patterns and access controls. As we can see in the snippet here, records now allow us to efficiently create, compose values from any existing data. If records allow you to combine data, patterns can allow to destructure those data. In the snippet below, we restructure the return value of geolocation into two individual variables, latitude and longitude, using a pattern declaration. Dart team also introduced new modifiers like an interface class, base class, and a mixing class. The speaker shows the differences between various Dart versions. On the right hand side, we see the Dart 1 compilation. This is the Dart 2 compilation. And finally, this is the Dart 3 compilation of that same code. Dart now also supports RISC-V, which is another platform architecture that is generating growing interest. Production RISC-V hardware is still in fancy. The speaker showed progress on the Clockwork Pi Dev term kit. And we can see here, this runs a custom Dart application. We can see the PubSpec log, PubSpec YAML. We can also see demo.exe here. Now the speaker tries to run that exe. When it's enter, we see that, hey, this is the Dart application which is loaded. Dart team milestones are actively being tracked in the GitHub Dart repository and we can see here that the Dart 3 Alpha 1 was closed. These are the next milestones for Dart 3. Next up is the productive platform integration. So the Dart team is working on expanding the interoperability for C. The Dart team has already improved the support for FFI Gen and in case you haven't checked out, I have a video on using FFI Gen in Dart 2.18. Powered by these tools, Dart can automatically create bindings that have a Dart interface and a language intro based on C, Objective-C or Kotlin. So there was also a demonstration for this. The speaker here uses FFI Gen to generate bindings for pedometer. Using the Java native interface, the speaker creates the bindings for the libraries in Kotlin. On the right hand side, the steps were first recorded and now the speaker walks a bit and when tries to refresh the app, the steps were changed. The team's goal is when this work gets completed, it will enable Flutter developers to call any Jetpack or iOS library without needing to use a plugin or learn a different API syntax. There are some breaking changes introduced with Dart 3. For instance, the Dart 3 type system is 100% sound null safety. From Dart 2.12, null safety was under a configuration that could either be on or off, but it's no longer to run the apps without null safety or in mixed mode. Some stats such as 100% of the top 250 packages support null safety, only 14% of Flutter run sessions still run without null safety. They mentioned that they are not planning any further breaking changes after Dart 3 alpha. Dart team also 
also have come up with a DAC3 ready tag for the packages. As we can see here, for the collection package, they have tag as DAC3 ready. And DAC3 alpha is available as of today in the DAC dev channel. There was also a special mention for widget catalogs from the community. This widget book is a collaboration platform for Flutter. The Flutter event was concluded with the new directions for Flutter and Dart. And these were some of the highlights from the Flutter forward event.